So if you start to develop sexual dysfunction, that's really the first sign and symptom of nitric oxide deficiency. And in men, that is? It's men and women. Okay. Because in, I mean, to get an erection in men or women, we have to have vasodilation mm -hmm. to get engorgement, to increase blood flow. And that comes from the blood vessels in the sex organs producing nitric oxide. So if you have vascular dysfunction in the sex organs, you can't produce nitric oxide, you get no dilation, then that's erectile dysfunction. And it's also part of the orgasm process. So for in women, to have an orgasm, you've got to get an increase in interlabial, interclitoral pressures, and that comes from an increase in blood flow. Mm. That blood flow comes from nitric oxide. So if you have vascular dysfunction, you can't make nitric oxide, no dilation, no increase in engorgement, no increase in pressure, and women become anorgasmic. It's um, yeah. It actually reminds me of a, a cream that um, are generally given to postmenopausal women to help with that process. And it is a vasodilator. I'm not sure what's what's in it, other than there's some estrogen and and some other yeah. things. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, but but then how does that explain why erectile dysfunction rates are actually rising? Well, if you think of what's so, then the next part of our kind of research program was. We know how the body makes nitric oxide. Now, what disrupts it? Yes. And so this answers many questions. Why is there an increase? <laughs> okay. I mean, 20-year-old kids with erectile dysfunction. Yes. What is, that what is erectile dysfunction classified as? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a disease diagnosis, but there's treatment for it, right? The PD-5 inhibitors, the drugs like the Viagra, the Cialis, and the Levitris, which act downstream of nitric oxide, they don't affect nitric oxide production. But it's vascular dysfunction. But yes. it's really a systemic disease. It manifests as erectile dysfunction. But if you can't dilate the blood vessels of the sex organs, that same disease occurs in the brain and the heart and the liver. So you have systemic vascular dysfunction. Yes. It just manifests as the inability to dilate the blood vessels at the proper time when we're stimulated, when we want to have sexual activity. And if you don't vasodilate, you don't get engorgement, and you can't get an erection. So it's, it's really the canary in the coal mine. And it's the first sign and symptom of nitric oxide deficiency. And mm. if you treat it as a lifestyle disorder and not treat it as a root cause of cardiovascular disease, then you're doing that patient a disservice. So we have to look at it now as really a systemic disease. Mm. And it's more than a lifestyle disorder or socially inconvenient you know, symptom. Yeah, It's a sign of systemic disease. It's funny that you said systemic because I teach... Um you know, I teach neuroscience and neurology. And when I'm, I'm talking about the blood vessels in the brain that supply the anterior part of the brain, we know that we've just got branching out of the aorta. We've got the carotid yeah. arteries, then we've got the vertebral arteries, but we don't usually tend to think of branching off into the entire system, right? Um, so I think that that's, that's a really important point to, to follow through with. And Viagra was also a, wasn't that first known as a cardiovascular disease drug? Yeah, Pfizer was developing it uh, originally as for pulmonary hypertension to dilate the pulmonary arteries, but it was, a, it was a vasodilator. Yeah. And so in these clinical trials, the men reported self-reported back that when they took this drug in the clinical trial, they experienced these great erections. And, you know, the economics <laughs> obviously lead uh, drug development from of these course. big pharmaceutical companies. So. They basically abandoned, you know, ischemic heart disease protocol for PD-5 inhibitors and yeah. even pulmonary hypertension and went for an erectile dysfunction. And it, it, I think it was, a, it was a wise choice because it was a huge unmet need yeah. at the time. But, you know, these drugs were approved in 1998. 26 years later, 50% of the men don't respond to these drug therapies. Wow. They don't respond with better erections. And now that we understand the mechanism of action of how these drugs work, these drugs work downstream of nitric oxide production. So if the body can't make nitric oxide, it mm -hmm. doesn't activate these second messenger systems, so these drugs cannot work. Mm. And that explains mm. why there's 50% non-responders to PD-5 inhibition therapy. So They're it's completely just devoid it. of nitric oxide deficiency. Yeah, so it's basically you're just putting a, a Band-Aid on it, really, which is the entire U.S. healthcare system, by well, the that's, way. You're, you're not addressing the root cause of the disorder. Yes. Because now we're fine. So nitric oxide kind of turns this switch on, and that's Viagra keeps it on. So nitric oxide leads to increase in cyclic GMP, which is a second messenger, and PD-5 inhibitors prevent the breakdown of the second messenger. That's why you're warned against four-hour erections, unsafe drop in blood pressure, because it's not isolated to your pelvic region. It's systemic. It's still dilating 
blood vessels of the brain. That's why you get a horrible headache because it leads to increase in cerebral or cranial mm. pressures and, you know, it can be dangerous. Um, and cause seizures, causes changes in vision, uh, an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Some men get priapism, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. leads to, you know, that's an extended, like a four hour erection, which people think, people wonder, well, what's wrong with that? Hmm. Well, the problem is you run out of oxygen and the yeah. outflow is constricted. So then this tissue is being deprived of oxygen for four hours. It leads to necrosis and you've got a dead organ. Yeah. That's quite scary. It's, no, it's, it's for very all the men scary. out there who wants a, a four-hour erection. 